Hey everyone, welcome back to the Beamer Barn and today we're gonna make a video that I've been waiting to make for a while now. It's a showdown between the E39 Touring and the E46 Touring and today we're gonna be looking at both of them to decide which car is a better purchase and which car you should add to your garage. So on the left here we have my 2005 E46 all-wheel drive wagon. This is the 325 XI. And on the right here we have my E39 Touring. It's a 540 that I swapped to an S62. So this is basically like an M5 wagon. But this car still has a ton of similarities. It's still basically just a wagon with a more powerful motor underneath the hood instead of the factory V8. So we're gonna be comparing these things side to side and uh, try to determine which car is a better car overall. And I think that the results might surprise you. So we're gonna first take a look at some of the similarities between both of these cars. Obviously, they are both wagons with four doors. They have the handy trunks that open along with the separate glass that opens separately. And they provide a lot of functionality over a sedan, in my opinion. One big thing for me is the interior room of the car and how the rear seats have more headspace. Because as you can see here, this car having a long roof line means that it doesn't have to slope off early towards the back of the car. And because of that, you get a ton more head clearance inside here. That's one of the big reasons I love the wagons is they feel so much bigger because of the rear head clearance. And also you get fold down seats. Fold down seats definitely come in handy more often than you'd think that you need them. And that's just because you sometimes get stuck in a position where you have to put something in the back of the car that's a little bit too big and uncomfortable to go in the trunk. And when you can go ahead and put the rear seats down like this, it means that you don't have to sacrifice any front space of the car and you won't even notice whatever you're trying to stick in the trunk. You'll definitely have a ton of room to be able to get whatever you need in there and make it work. Now, another thing that I want to talk about is the year and the price point that you can get these cars at. Because both of these cars basically overlap in the years that they were produced, and some of the similarities between the chassis options are there, you can basically find them for very similar price points. So that's gonna be a huge similarity between these two cars, is if you wanna grab one, you could probably find one from anywhere between $2,000 to $5,000 for one that's in really good condition, and you'd have yourself a BMW wagon from that early 2000s era. Another great similarity is that these cars both have similar tech in them. So the light control modules, all the general control modules, relay systems, all this is very similar between both cars. So you can take that as a pro or a con, but basically that makes it very similar to diagnose problems. And also the cost of parts is gonna be very similar as well. Both of these cars have aftermarket parts coming on the market every day that are gonna be a big part of restoring these cars in the future because BMW doesn't produce parts for these cars anymore. So it's getting harder to get these parts. They're going on back order left and right and the prices are going up as well. So something to keep in mind there is that both of these cars have similar technology and you're gonna find a similar price point in restoring them when you do so. So as far as engine and drivetrain configurations, that's where things start to get different between the three series and the five series, because the five series was always available with bigger motors because of the added weight, the longer wheelbase, the bigger car basically. Uh, the three series, however, was always aimed to be more of a sports car. So you're basically getting a sport wagon depending on which configuration you get. Now the E46 three series is available in a ton of different motor configurations, but when you get over to the wagon side, you realize that there's just a few motor options available I think for the all-wheel drive, the biggest that you can get is the 2.5 liter M54. And I'm not sure in the rear wheel drive version, but I believe that the 325 is also the biggest motor you can get in this car from factory. Uh, de definitely one of you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. If anything, if you could get a 330i wagon in rear wheel drive, that would be an awesome car uh, because you'd have that big 220 horsepower M54 motor and you'd be able to combine it with this. But when you compare that to what's available on the E39, you can grab one of these chassis with a big old four liter motor inside of it, V8, with about 
about 300 horsepower and some of them were even available with factory manual transmissions which makes it a great pairing in this car because you can take control of that power and really put it on the ground so if you're looking at something to get more power you should probably look at the 5 series if you're looking for something to be a little more sporty then you should probably look at the e46 so now what we're going to do is we're going to get in my e39 and i'm going to start talking about some of the big differences on the inside of the car so I'm gonna be honest with you, I might be a little bit biased talking about the E39 because I'm a huge 5 Series guy and there's a reason that I own so many of them and have owned so many of them. The E39 has a really special place in my heart because of the fact that it feels like such a like a chauffeur's car. It's kind of hard to describe, but there's that one commercial that I'll play a little clip of it here that's so famous with the E39 M5 and Madonna in the back seat. Why are we going so slow? Excuse me? <laughs> And that's really what I get about this car is it feels like a driver focused car that the passengers can just really enjoy all of the cabin space and the features available. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So the first thing that I really want to talk about is this perfect little switch panel right here. Uh, if you have the M5, you would have the folding mirror button, which I don't have retrofitted yet, uh, but you've got your mirror controls left and right, the switch, all your windows right here and then the child safety lock. And I have to tell you that it's one of the best feelings in the world to come in the car and just go tap, tap, and let all the windows roll down by themselves. And whenever you need to, you can simply press the buttons right here. Now that's a little bit different on the E46. On the E46, you don't get all the buttons here. You just have the window aim for left and right, but all of your window switches are here in the middle. And what does that mean? Is that the front passenger door doesn't have any buttons on it at all. They have to use the singular button for their window that is right here. Now, what I notice is when I'm driving, and I bet this would be just as annoying for a manual, but when I'm driving and I wanna put the windows down, I have to go ahead and put my hands from left and right, and I have to go over this little shifter here and when you wanna put all the windows down, or let's say just the front windows, you're gonna to have to go tap, tap. If you wanna do all the windows, then you kinda of have to do this weird position with your fingers, and it's smaller over here. And then you got the child safety button. So just not as good of an experience, in my opinion, as far as how the windows work. But let's hop back in the E39. Now back inside of this car, definitely it feels much more roomy. So there's a longer dashboard. I got more space to lounge my feet out. And while I'm fully lounged out, there's still plenty of room in the back seat for passengers. You've also got this extra wide uh, center console here, and that gives you plenty of space next to your passenger. And as you can see, you know, there's that switch for the passengers. So I'd say that's a plus because usually people look on their doors when they're looking for a switch to put their window up and down, let's say if they need to get some fresh air or something. So it's nice to have it on the outside. Uh, but again, in the interior here, we have nice storage. Uh, there's a ton of different options options for like the cup holders that you can get here versus the storage bin um, and then there's also tons of different configurations for the center console here there's the euro armrest which actually would unfold and give you an extra center compartment uh, you can get these with a little cubby tray like I have equipped or you can have a factory telephone so that was a really cool uh, five series feature was you could have that factory telephone of course it's basically useless nowadays because it wouldn't work anymore here's a look at the front uh, instrument display. I do have an aftermarket radio. This is an Eonon radio, uh, but it would replace the factory double unit, which is right here. And then the AC controls, as well as all the buttons for like sport, heated seats and stuff like that are down here. So you really get this cockpit feel in the E39, especially with this radio. I love the configuration of the buttons and how uniform and good it looks. And when the car is on, you can actually have the button program to light up a certain color as well. So there it is lit up and it's going to start starting up my Android radio here in a second. Uh, but it just looks great having the orange buttons on the orange uh, factory right here. 
and then you also have the orange from the display up here uh, so it all really integrates well i'm a big fan of this interior uh, love the buttons that light up love the little switches and then you also get these little ambient lights here so from an interior perspective you definitely get a little bit better experience as far as like a cockpit feel and you also have more space just the sheer cabin volume inside of this car is much larger than the e46 i definitely think that because the wheelbase is longer you get more space as well as the fact that you don't have any noticeable wheel arch in the back of the car here whereas on the e46 you kind of have this weird hump where the back of the trunk is wider than the main area which has the wheel arch which kind of interferes and then again it gets wide up here after the wheel arch ends uh so definitely a similar amount of space but less than you would get in the e39 for sure and here in the center console of the car again you do have a little bit less room we're going to be talking about cup holders in a second here but you have a similar area where you can do a double din display aftermarket this is the factory one that's fitted you do have you know buttons down here uh, but i would just say that overall you know there's kind of less going on the uh, buttons on my steering wheel aren't lit up you do have some ambient lighting up here which is nice uh but to me i really resonate with the e39 interior and especially you know you have the option of having like a high cluster which gives you a lot of information on the e39 and this is basically what all e46 clusters will look like the m1's a little bit different but of course they don't give you as much information up here as the e39 one does and as far as radio goes, I don't even think you have the option for factory nav on an E46, uh, whereas the E39, you did have that option. It came on a lot of M5s as well. It had a screen and it would give you a lot of information, menu, and I think even GPS and stuff like that. So as far as like cooler OEM features, I think you're definitely gonna get that from the E39. So let's go ahead and hop back into that car and talk a little bit more about the features that it has that this car kind of lacks. Now we talked about the interior size, some of the features and such i do think that the e39 doors have much better construction um, as far as like when you close the door it has a nice low tone it's a nice heavy door and it closes with intent whereas listen to the e46 door it's definitely lighter it feels a little bit shorter and when you close it so you definitely have a little bit more of a Mm, sturdier construction I guess you would call it with the E39 which car would I rather be in a car accident with probably the one that's heavier so the E39 but one more feature that I want to talk about in the back here is gonna be the rear trunk section and kind of again how usable it is so one cool feature that I noticed recently is that this trunk actually has a lock on it so that you can lock this piece down and now if someone wanted to come in the back here, they wouldn't be able to pull this thing up. It's actually locked in a down position. So you could do this if you were leaving your car at a hotel or if you had to give it over to valet or something. Because you can definitely put something safe in here. Like, I don't know, anything. And then you'll have it for safekeeping. Another cool feature that I noticed the E39 wagon has is this nifty looking thing right here. It literally clips onto your weather seal and acts like a little latch for the trunk here so that you can access your storage compartment. And then if we take this uh, foam piece here, this little insulation that goes above your spare tire, this little clip, this red clip here, latches on and keeps that there as well. So now you have access to your spare tire, or if you don't have the spare tire, you know, you can put whatever else you want in here. Uh, so basically this car served a lot of purpose uh, back when it came out. You know, you could take out the tire and put a little safe, a safety deposit box. So basically, I think that this is a cool feature. You know, the 5 Series is definitely a businessman's car. What does a businessman need with a locked storage compartment? I don't know. You tell me. But besides that, you know, both cars have these really cool nets 
Um, mine, unfortunately, does not have the cargo net feature, but that is something that you could like order from the dealership back in the day, or nowadays, I think you can probably just find them on eBay used. I definitely wanna get one of those, it looks pretty cool, but it has the latches for it, so it definitely would work if we had one of those. And when you start poking around with some of the side covers and such, you realize that you, you know, you know, you have access to the battery in the typical location, but also the E39 came with an auxiliary sub, depending on what model yours had. So you have really nice bass coming from the audio system. Probably you could argue that the sound system is gonna be better optioned in the E39. Uh, and over here we have our amplifier and some other modules. So honestly though, the sound systems are probably comparable in quality, I would say. I have a couple of blown speakers on my E39, but the E46 really jams out. And in the back here, you can see, uh, instead of having two speakers in the roof, they are instead back here. Uh, so it kind of has like a low tone effect. Obviously the carpet would absorb a lot of the noise. So I noticed that on the E46, I can't, I have trouble getting this uh, main cover out. I have to pull up the battery cover. And also I think it's cause, I mean, I think that there was a ribbon there before it might be broken off, but there is definitely no latch to keep this thing hung up on the roof. So you kind of have to be quick and short with whatever you're getting down here. You have a full size spare, you know, spare tire. Well, uh, the battery's over there in the corner. We have our, uh, you know, our safety tools, jack and tow hook down there. Over here, there really is no useful space. Uh, there's the washer reservoir, which is separate for the rear wiper compared to the E39 that just uses the main washer reservoir. And then over on this side, again, you're just gonna find a couple of uh, modules and also the, the tow hook. So overall, a little bit less space, kind of similar features. You don't get the locking rear trunk, uh, but you do have that really nice net here, the privacy shade, they call it, so that when you wanna treat this car like more of a car and be able to put something in the trunk that nobody's gonna see, you know, you can do that. So now, finally, we're gonna get in the E46 and talk a little bit about some of the features that the E46 has that the E39 doesn't. So we're back here inside the car, and like I said, one of the biggest things that I would prefer on the E46 over the E39 is the cup holders. The E39 ones are kind of these flimsy things you can get in the front. Mine doesn't even have them because it was a certain option, and you also have the ones in the rear. Uh, but these ones on the E46 are super sturdy. Um, you can fit a lot of different size cups in them, and also the fact that there's two of them and that they're next to each other, they actually work. Whereas the E39 ones, you could probably fit like two Red Bull cans in the front, but that's probably it. Also in the rear of the car on the E46 here, you get this really nice uh, double cup holder that's oversized as well. And you can actually have this down as like a seat separator for the two rear passengers. So you've got a total of four full size cups that you can put inside of this car here, which makes it a winner in the term of the cup holder category, or like what I would say is like the da daily driver category. Uh, Cause in terms of like being a daily driver, the E46 is probably gonna win that. Um, um, it's a little bit smaller, so it's easier to park. The car has smaller, more efficient motors. It weighs less, better gas mileage. And also this car has lighter steering, not only because you have less weight over the front axles, uh, but on the V8 model E39s, you actually have a steering box, which is really kind of old school, I would say, uses like arms and such. And on the uh, E46, you're always gonna have a steering rack. Now, if you have like a 528 or 525, like a six cylinder E39, you'll also get a steering rack on there. But I have to say that the steering on this car feels so comfortable, great to, you know, do quick maneuvers in. And the whole car feels very light when you're driving it. So from a handling perspective, if you want something a little more nimble, this is probably the car for you. Now, although I said that both the E39 and the E46 chassis share similar price points and technology in terms of the modules and buying aftermarket parts and such, I would like to mention that the E39 Touring uses a different rear subframe from the sedan, and so it uses entirely different suspension in the rear end as the sedan. So when you go to lower it, it's a totally different story. Some cars even had air ride suspension, and so you have to have that coated out if you wanna go to like a standard coilover, which isn't technically a coilover, it's uh, more of 
of a spring and separate strut assembly. Whereas on the E39 sedan cars, you do have a true coilover where the spring goes around the shock. On the E46 wagon though, you notice that a lot of the parts in the rear end are just exactly the same as a sedan. Uh, the rear subframe is the same as a sedan or a coupe E46. The drive shaft length is the same as a sedan. Um, the trailing arms are the same. Everything is super interchangeable between all E46 chassis. The only thing that's different is on the E46 M3, the subframe has a different pickup point for the differential. So if you wanted to build an E46 M3 wagon, you would definitely still need the rear subframe because you're going to have to fit the differential in there as well. But otherwise, in terms of like parts compatibility, if I wanted to go get some rear suspension component from a sedan, it would bolt right up to the wagon. Whereas on the E39, it would be a totally different story. I couldn't use anything from an E39 sedan in the rear of the wagon. So there's definitely that advantage for the E46. So I would say if you're looking for something that's a little more interchangeable with parts that you can find cheaper and more easily at the junkyard, the E46 might be the better car in that scenario. So now we've laid out a ton of similarities and differences between the E39 and the E46 touring platform, and it's time to make a final decision. So which car would I buy if I had to choose between these two? Well, it's a really hard decision. If I'm looking for a daily driver that I'm gonna be able to basically repair for cheaper, be a little more maneuverable, better on gas mileage, and just kind of a more of a commuter car, I think I would go with the E46 wagon. Because the parts are a little more interchangeable with like sedans, it's gonna make it easier to get cheap parts for it. And also, it's just a smaller car, a smaller motor, and just makes sense as a more sporty, nimble car. If I need something though that I need to use as a second car to go on road trips with, date night, to pack a bunch of friends in the back and go to the springs with, I would definitely go with the E39 wagon because it's got extra space, extra luxury, and a little more power depending on which motor you get. And of course, I can't complain because I've got that S62 in here, which is a great combination with the wagon. Overall though, if I had to choose one to live with as my only car, I'm sorry guys, I would have to go with the E46 wagon. That thing has just been such a blast to drive. The all-wheel drive makes it even cooler because it would be such a great car to have up north to go on trails with and icy roads and stuff. No problem in this car. Uh, it's got a lot of space in it. You don't need a lot more than that. Although the E39, it is nice to have that extra side to side room, uh, but it makes the car more nimble. It still feels really light. And even though this one has the 2.5 liter M54, the car is definitely pretty quick. I will say that stepping on it, the car can definitely accelerate faster than you'd think from a red light. So I I hope you guys enjoyed this comparison of both of these wagons and if you're in the market for one I bid you good luck finding one that's gonna serve your needs and now you've heard my opinion but maybe you can decide on your own which car would be a better fit for you if you agree with me let me know down in the comments below or if you think that the e39 is the better all-around car let me know and I look forward to hearing you guys discuss it in the comments down below if you're new to the channel consider subscribing leave a like before you go and as always I hope everyone has an awesome day We'll see you next time. Peace out, guys.